Hello everyone and welcome to Windows Forensics here at Pentester Academy. In this video, I want to go over some of the very basics of using volatility. Now if you installed the source code version of volatility, you will have a script called vol.py and you should be able to run this from anywhere. So I'll just say vol.py and it says I'm volatility 2.5 and the error is you didn't tell me what to do. So I will go ahead and rerun this with the dash H option. I'm going to go ahead and pipe this to more. So first it will give me some options. The first one being help, which I'm looking at now. And then the next option I can give it is I can give it a configuration file. And here's the default. The default is found in my home directory. I can also attempt to debug volatility. I can add my own plugins and I just list the directories for those plugins. I can print out information on registered objects. I can select a cache directory for volatility to do its work. I can tell it please use caching. I can also adjust the time zone for displaying timestamps. And here is a very important option, giving it an image. Another extremely important option. You have to give it a profile. Now, the profile tells Volatility exactly what version of the operating system this image is from. Now, in the case of Linux, there was a little bit of work in order to build a profile because there are so many variations on Linux. You know, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of possibilities. There are a ton of distros out there. They each have different versions. People are running different kernel versions, etc. So in the case of a Linux system, you had to build this profile. Now in Windows, there's a certain set that everyone has. So you're a little bit better off doing volatility on a Windows system because you don't have to work so hard to get started. So there's a list of these you can get using dash dash info, and I'll show you that in a little bit. You can also set a location. You can enable write support. You can use DTBs. There are some other options as well, such as the output format. Output file. You can ask for verbose stuff as well. Then there are commands. So volatility comes with a nice list of plugins, and we will go through a lot of these. So we can do things like detect API hooks. We can look at callbacks, get the Windows clipboard, get command history, get some crash information, show a device tree, all kinds of information on DLLs we can get, also information on drivers. Don't worry, I'm going through these rather quickly and we will go through these in more detail in future videos. You can get process environment variables, you can get event logs, depending on the version of Windows you're running. You can get something called a global descriptor table. You can get password hash dumps from memory. If there's hibernation information, you can get that. You can get Internet Explorer information. You can get a process's memory dump. You can get memory maps, MFT entries. You might, might have thought we were done with the MFT entries. You can get privileges for process. There are a few process commands such as PS list, scan, tree, X view. If you're using Quimu, you can get some information about that. You can get service information, shutdown time, information on threads information on TrueCrypt if it's being used, user assist information, 
VirtualBox information, etc. So you can get quite a bit of stuff from volatility out of the box. You know, as time goes on and new versions of volatility come out, I'm sure that they will release additional plugins. And of course, you can develop your own. So let's backtrack just for a second and let's look at some of the options available to you using the info flag. So here's the different profiles that we have available. So you can see we have Vista, we have Windows 10, 2003, Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows XP. So we have all of the standard versions of Windows. Now, you might wonder why does it need to know the exact version of any operating system that's being used and the reason is pretty clear. The reason that you need an exact version is that the internal structures that are used by volatility, it's essentially using kernel structures that keep track of memory and other things, and those can change from one version of an operating system to the next. Just like an exploit is not good for every single version of an operating system, you know, often if you have a different patch level, something won't work as an exploit anymore, etc. The same is true with the internal structure of the kernel. So how do you use volatility? Generally, you want to do something like this. vol.py-f now give it an image file. Now we created a memory image way back in something like video 12. You know, so over 90 videos ago. So if you don't remember how we did that, go back and review the live forensics portion of this course. And I captured this memory image. Now this was a Windows 7 service pack 1x64 image. And if I say I would like to do a PS list, there I have a list of processes that were running when I captured this image. So that is a very basic way to use volatility. In some future videos, we will show you various commands, but that's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos here at Pentester Academy, please tell a friend. We'll see you soon.